emitting uh, interstellar photons coming in, which break things up from radicals and ions and drive and drive chemistry and build much more complexity in these outer outer regions of the of the heaven. So the, 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 the scales in terms of densities go from what one's interested in go from maybe 10 to the 13 particles per cubic centimeter down to a few hundred on the edge and temperatures from perhaps a thousand or 1500 degrees Kelvin in the inner regions down to 10K at the, at the ex external parts of the, of the envelope. So there's a large uh, variation in, in physical processes which can affect chemistry quite dramatically in different uh, regions of the objects. So these regions are very generic or special to IR? Uh, so uh, so these regions are very generic, but this just is the picture with the molecules present in, in RC 1016. But you can write, you can you can do this picture also for an oxygen-rich star. It would just be different molecules, but the same processes, the same processes. So I'm going to talk uh, mostly about the inner regions of these objects, which has been um, uh, since since Alma has come online, which has been a, a focus for both observations and and uh, theoretical approaches to try and understand what happens in the the inner layers, particularly where the, where the, where the dust forms. Uh, and, and so this picture just, again, is another way of, of looking at the other one, where you have a, a photosphere where molecules form. These molecules move out, depending whether they're in an, in a, this is in an oxygen-rich star. You have a number of molecules which go into forming uh, oxide, oxide dust. And uh, these are then driven out by radiation, pressure out into the, into the external envelopes of, of the processes that go on in the inner regions aren't really well understood, uh, but we're beginning to get uh, much more information on them. And what, the, what this information shows generally is, with ALMA, that this uh, spherically symmetric, smooth, uh, wind expanding, so you get a one over R squared distribution uh, in, in, uh, in density, it doesn't it doesn't hold anymore. You can try to get some information out about pretty in the oxygen rich stars uh, because you can see the kind of, uh, you can detect the elements that go into dust grains, so the titanium, aluminium, uh, calcium, uh, silicon. You can observe molecules of these elements. And so you can probe the molecules uh, that, uh, with containing the elements that will eventually end up in, end up in, in dust. And carbon stars, uh, one can't really do that because uh, um, uh, we don't see the, um, easily see uh, carbon molecules in the inner regions of, of, uh, of carbon rich stars. So you can say something about what goes into what goes into dust grains by observing a variety of molecules and trying to work out uh, work out their abundances to, in terms of a fraction of the elemental abundance in the in the gas case at least. And there have been a number of these studies done with in, in, in recent years uh, with with uh, Alma in particular, which look at titanium and aluminium uh, species. And they tell you perhaps different things in different stars, but um, there are certainly objects in which uh, titanium has very high abundance, so maybe 80 or 90 percent of the uh, titanium elemental abundance contained in the gas phase, out to uh, really out beyond which the dust is formed. Um, so it's not formed at least in terms of seeding the dust growth. Um, there are other uh, regions where other objects where we can see. Um, Maybe 10 percent of the aluminium is in aluminium oxide, and there are myths in this, uh, in this work that what, what you're actually seeing here is, is that there's a conversion of aluminium oxide into, into, into uh, alumina, which you see in the, in the grain distributions. You see also when you look with, with Alma in particular that, that um, uh, the, the gas is very clumpy. So this is ALO, aluminium oxide in, in Mara. So there are uh, clumps of emission. There's this absorption is, uh, aluminium oxide is present here, but it's absorbing against the, the, the stellar continuum uh, in this region. So, so this is very clumpy again on, on scales of uh, cross here of one arc second or so. So um, a few stellar radii. Uh, this is um, uh, sodium chloride. Again, sodium is expected to be locked up in, in, in dust grains. But again, you see in the, in the gas phase, so this is uh, clumps of sodium chloride that extend or for, much further out in the in the envelope than the than the dust formation zone. So the dust formation zone is is in around this sort of uh, this sort of region. So this is a dust continuum peak. This is a position of, of, of the star. So we are getting information that 
Um, that's it's very uh, clumpy close to the stuff. People have tried to understand dust formation, particularly in, in punching the rich stars, um, theoretically by starting a simple diatomic and see how do, you, how do you build up much more complex uh, silicates. So this is some theoretical calculations uh, from Gumins and Bromley from a few years ago now, where they started with silicon monoxide, and going right, you add either a, a, a magnesium or a silicon uh, to, this, to, the, uh, to, the, to the molecule, and going down, you add an oxygen. So they start with silicon monoxide and want to end up with, with something uh, much larger with a mixture of magnesium, silicon, and monoxide, which looks more like a, a, a silicate type uh, molecule. And they have calculated the, the equilibrium structures for, for all of these species uh, as, as, uh, as you increase in, in size. And this is color coded so that um, red means that there's an energetic barrier to go from, for example, silicon monoxide to magnesium, silicon monoxide, uh, or from silicon monoxide to silicon dioxide by, by adding an oxygen. And it shows in general the, the, the difficulty that at least theory has of trying to understand uh, dust nucleation and dust growth from a kinetic point of view, because you see all the endothermic processes that occur for these small regions. Once you get over a certain size, all the processes become exothermic, and it's easy to build uh, complexity to the molecules, but really uh, starting the process off uh, turns out to be very, uh, very difficult. So it happens in nature, clearly, but our understanding of how this happens is, is uh, still, very, still very lacking. In fact, if, so I, I took this from a, a thesis by, by Yells Boulanger at, at Leuven, who's uh, where, where uh, the, the group there have been uh, observing aluminium oxides uh, with, with ALMA and these oxygen stars. And he's put together a scheme of trying to make these, these simple aluminium oxide particles. And he's also got similar schemes put together for titanium uh, and magnesium as well. But you see, this, so this is his uh, uh, simple chemistry. He really wanted even, only to get to Al203. Um, but he's, he has, in his, in his loop here, he's got chemistry going up to 14 aluminiums, 21 oxides. Uh, this is a chemistry that's going on at uh, 1,500 de degrees. So there's a, a great lack of, of uh, laboratory information. It's very hard to do studies of these refractory particles uh, in general in, in the laboratory. So there's a huge amount of uncertainty that goes into making these kind of, of, of networks and then calculating how you, you build up these uh, large aluminium, aluminium oxides. So even simple chemistry can be at least uh, very complex and there's a huge amount of uncertainty uh, behind it. So I mentioned at the beginning that one of the real surprises uh, in, in this field was the detection of hot water in IRC 10216, um, which was uh, made now almost a, almost a decade ago. And a whole range of, of, of oxygen transitions uh, uh, observed, mostly with Herschel, um, and with energies above uh, about a thousand keV of the, the ground state. And profiles that indicate, and from the fits that people did, that this water arises in the inner envelope. As I said, it's quite a surprise because in these carbon stars, it was thought that the carbon monoxide soaked up all the oxygen there was. Uh, and a little bit of silicon monoxide, but a kind of trace amount of silicon monoxide in these, in these objects. But no other oxygen compounds have been detected at this, at this point. And then subsequently, OH, which is the uh, photo dissociation product of, of water, was detected, and uh, formaldehyde was also detected. So this was a, 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 quite a surprise. And there were a number of different explanations put forward for this. So one of these explanations was that, uh, again, fitting in with, with what we now know about these objects, that they're, they're quite clumpy, was that, that um, if the envelope of RC10216 is, is, is clumpy, there may be site lines where the interstellar radiation field gets in a long way. So maybe gets in uh, uh, to, to radii around um, a few ten, 10 to the 14, or maybe 10 stellar radii, as opposed to the traditional region where you're out at several hundred uh, stellar radii, or even a thousand stellar radii. So um, Gundes and Chernicharo's group, they developed some simple models which, which it said if you had a few percent of interstellar photons able to penetrate into these high density, high temperature regions, then it's possible that you can break down uh, carbon 13 CO, which, which isn't as optically thick as uh, 12 CO, it doesn't self shield as well, or the trace amounts of silicon monoxide that you have. And that would release oxygen 
and if you're in a high temperature region, oxygen reacts with H2, and you make OH and you make and you make water. And so these are some plots taken from from a Gunga's paper. So the solid line here uh, is uh, the typical model where you see outer envelope photochemistry, and if you let photons get in, then you can get these uh, distributions that, that continue to be quite abundant, quite far into the into the into the envelope. So the standard models have no water uh, at all in these in these envelopes. So these clumpy models can produce uh, quite large uh, fractions of water once it's right down into uh, three or four stellar uh, stellar radii. There are other explanations. So um, people have looked at what happens to pulsations driving shocks into the envelopes. So there's some uh, calculations from, from, from Churchneff. Um, and uh, she shows that the water bonds, which is in green here, that in, in the, the post-shock uh, chemistry that goes on, um, that you can form water at abundances of 10 to the minus 4. It depends where you are in relation to the, to the stellar radius. As you, as you go out in, in, uh, in distance, the, the sh uh, shocks become weaker. They don't drive the chemistry as, as efficiently. So when you're close to the star, uh, so now water's in red, you can make significant fraction of the oxygen into, into water. Um, as you get further out, you still get abundances of, of 10 to the minus uh, 6 water, so across that factor of about, about 100. So there are other ways of, of, of um, uh, producing uh, hot water uh, close into the, to, to the star. So another surprising uh, identification in, in 